if you're doing music, at some point, you're going to have to handle your business. And you're probably making a lot of mistakes. Let's try and eliminate a few. Metal Base Monday. So a couple quick things about the channel. Uh, please subscribe and hit that like button and hit the alerts. Uh, been looking at the back panel and stuff and it's kind of crazy that a lot of my viewers actually aren't my subscribers, which tells me a lot of you aren't getting notifications. So remember to turn on all the alerts and everything because I wouldn't want you to miss anything. And I love having you here, especially down in the comments. So make sure you get those notices and keep up with everything that's going on because a lot's coming. Now, on that note, uh, we're going to be talking about music business stuff here this week. And that brings me to something really cool that's happened and we're going to talk more about it. But this Metal Base Monday is being brought to you by DistroKid. Uh, this is the first sponsor that I've been willing to have on the show, and it's been re something really cool. Part of what you know is coming up is that I'm getting ready to do the walkthrough of taking a project from conception all the way through to a finished product and then releasing it and showing you every step of the process. And that got me really looking into distribution again. And that was one of the first crippling mistakes on the initial release that I did, and I didn't want to repeat it this time. So I was looking for new distribution and had settled on DistroKid for a number of reasons I'm going to tell you about here and show you why and how and when you should be thinking about this type of stuff. And they generously offered to sponsor an episode here and also to give everybody who's on the channel a link right here, and you can find it down in the description, that's going to get you 7% off anytime you use that sign up for your first year in. So that's a very cool and generous thing too. And I like dealing with a business that seems like they're really invested in your success as well. And it looks like DistroKids kind of got the lock on that. So let's break down what we're looking at, when you should be doing this, and then we're going to take a look at how you can handle it through something like DistroKid. One of the big things that I find a lot of people doing, and it's a huge mistake, is they leave all the business end at the end of the creation cycle. And that's the worst time. <laughs> when you really need to be doing it is actually before you even start creating. Get your marketing, get your distribution, all of that in line so it's already set to go when you're ready to go. Trying to figure all this out afterward, I've seen a thousand bands fight through the whole recording cycle, they come up with this great product, and then they get right up to the end and the ball gets dropped, there's a long wait until everything's done at the end and distributed, and then it's all last minute decisions and a rush to get things done. Start at the beginning. Have this and all of your business stuff going at the same time as the creation, not afterward. Now, also lately you've seen probably my video on the whole uh, copyright and content ID system problems, things like that, and with doing cover songs and stuff like that. And these are two huge reasons why I went with DistroKid. And we're going to see in a minute how inside the panel you can make really smart, informed choices you want to make ahead of time to make sure that this stuff doesn't come back to bite you like it did me, and I had to learn it the hard way. So getting your distribution down having it all in place is going to be crucial and it's really not that hard but there are some keys of why I really definitely recommend DistroKid and what were important to me and if you've been watching the videos you'll know why these are great resolutions. So let's take a look at the panel real quick and I'm going to explain the choices and how this functions as we go. This is our default panel so let's go in to get some music going. And as you can see right off you've got an elective log or an elective distribution for all your different outlets. A lot of times you don't get that. With my last distributor that was one of the big problems is that they just did everything and you had no actual micromanagement over it and you wound up in positions that you really didn't like or dealing with certain outlets that you didn't want to be on. Now the other cool thing is you can go as many songs as you want, 
and you don't have to do a full album at a time. You can release it in pieces. That's really important. One of the big reasons for that is that we're not really in a thing in a society anymore that really values album cycles. They're becoming obsolete. So releasing your songs one at a time is going to make a lot more marketing sense. And it's also going to let you push and promote each one instead of one large lump product. That's going to be a really big consideration. And this makes it really simple so that you can go in and pick and choose how your stuff gets distributed and whether it's a single or a few songs and how often they come out. So it's really cool that you can pick that right from the beginning. You also get a lot of question pieces in here that make it a lot easier for you to get from zero to finished and get your distribution going without any snags. Has it been released? Making sure you get all the appropriate information. Uh, and like with here, setting your release date at least a week in the future. That's going to help you getting your distribution in, setting up things like Spotify playlists. These are the type of things of why I'm warning you, get it done first. Because you want to already have the Spotify playlists that you want to get onto, people you want to work with or exchange things with, you want them to be already on board, not trying to find them after your song's out and you're losing momentum. It's just kind of sitting there dead. It can be really discouraging and it hurts your overall promotion campaign. You can set it up for pre-order. Very cool option. Again, that's definitely something I have wanted to do and my previous distributor didn't offer it. You can make up your own record label. Who doesn't want to say they're the head of a record label? Come on. It's cool stuff. Album cover art, you get to put it right in here, get it set up. Primary genres, all this is pretty self-explanatory. Song titles, then uploading your files. Here's something that I really like, is that if you say another artist wrote this, Cover songs are okay. Automatically, DistroKid will secure the license and pay for it on behalf through a third party and make sure all that stuff's taken care of. This, for me, was another really crucial thing. I plan on doing some covers, uh, some tribute pieces here and there, or if you just want to throw out, you know, like around the time, unfortunately, we lose an artist or something, like maybe Chris Cornell or Prince or something, and you do a tribute song or something like that, and it turns out well and you want to do it, you don't have to go through finding the rights, getting all these clearances, all this garbage. You can go right to the art, do it, upload it, and they got you covered. That to me, because I plan on doing a few, was a big, big advantage. And from a past Metal Base Monday and from the recent video again about the YouTube takedowns, you know that's been a really big issue. It's been affecting a lot of creators like myself, and you can run up against it. I know some of you have also had your covers taken down, things like that, had to fight copyright. Upload it, done deal. So that to me is huge and a really big advantage. So hats off to DistroKid for getting that set right in the dashboard from the word go. You have a lot more control than what I've seen at the two other distributors that I've worked with. You can, you know, say whether it's a radio edit and then also, you know, be able to file for different versions of the song, say an explicit version, radio edit, that type of thing. Tons of different options that were available and even control over track pricing. That's something I haven't seen except for DistroKid. It may be available somewhere else, but that's new to me. Right here we have extras where it's actually an extra for them to use content ID and to be able to pursue your rights on YouTube. I, I'm okay with people using my music and I don't care if they want to put it in the background or do something like that. It's just promotion for me. That's the way I look at it. So this is a big deal. Being able to add to Instagram and Facebook and have people use your songs you know, on there or you know, background music, whatever it is, that could be a cool opt-in. Store Maximizer, uh, you know, they can send the new single to online stores and streaming services as they add them and uh, get you a notice, and that's a, you know, fairly low-priced add-on. You could be added to Shazam and Siri. This I really like. This is one I'm probably going to jump in on. Uh, you can see I'm already with uh, cover song licensing. Uh, 
DistroKid won't delete this single from stores due to a lapsed membership, and you'll continue to get 100% of the royalties as you normally would. This means that even if you pass away, which all of us will one day, that your music will still keep going and still be available. It's not going to get yanked down the first time you don't pay your yearly, that you pay this one-time thing, and you're pretty much up there until, well... The world stops as we know it, I guess, or <laughs> everything changes over. So that's really kind of a cool option, too, and I like that. So for all these reasons, this is why I chose them. And again, I recommend it. The link is down there. Save yourself a few bucks on me and on DistroKid. But these are all major options you need to be thinking about. And you want to have them out of the way so that your release goes smoothly. There's no hiccups. Your promotional campaigns go the way you want to. Booking your shows goes. I'm telling you, take it from me because it's happened. Having this stuff all get settled at the end when you didn't pay attention to it early on, you're going to hit these cement walls that are going to take weeks or months to get around or to fix and try and figure out what happened and it just winds up destroying any momentum you have. It's not a lot to join, it's cheap, you get a discount through us, and it can save you a lot of grief in the end. Have it in your pocket already. If you're thinking about recording music before you play the first note, get the basics down and get your memberships and things like that together. It's great to know it's there and to have it. And that at any time you can go, hey, something came up, I got a great song, I'm on it. You just jump into the panel, and you're out to the rest of the world. So, crucial mistake a lot of people make can really destroy your release and your momentum. Get on it. Don't let it happen. Get with DistroKid, definitely my recommendation. And you're all set. All the options you need are right there. Click on, click off. So, that's going to wrap up this part. Topic number two. So, Topic two is basically going to be a kind of lightning round of a bunch of questions that I've gotten, FAQs, curiosities, and things. So I'm just going to do them in succession here and try and get some answers out. What brand basses have I played? Well, as you probably know, I play Schechter and love them absolutely, and they make a fantastic bass. Uh, I do still own some of my other basses from the past, but Schechter is really where I'm at home and they just put out continually better and better every year product so I'm happy to be with that. In the past I have played Tobias. I had a couple of their six strings. Uh, I've played Spectre. Always thought highly of them. Really like that sound. Uh, that's the, as we talked about before, classic PJ EMG sound in the early NS2s. Fantastic. And a place that I first developed my love for the double P configuration basses, uh, I used to play the original handmade BC Riches. Not kind of what's associated now, but I uh, <laughs> uh, had a number of those. Unfortunately, had a couple stolen at one point. But uh, yeah, the original handmaids, I've had a number of them and just got this bad boy in recently. And that's been a cool thing to kind of revisit from the past. But those have been my primaries. Uh, but there are a number of oddballs here and there that I've had, uh, and those have been fun too. I had a carbon base, one of the really old, old X carbons that had a Kaler whammy on it. I still want one of those on one of my new bases. Uh, and I had a Hamer Scarab at one point. I was so Def Leppard it out, but I didn't play Def Leppard. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Wouldn't mind kind of having one of those in the I don't need it, but I just want it for the hell of it bank. Uh, and that's most of it. But, yeah, I've gone through a good set of bases in my time. I've probably owned about 60. And right now I have about 12 in my collection. So, those are my bases. Yes, there is one piece of gear that I've never been able to get along with and is massively popular, and it I just can't. I, I've heard such great sounds out of everybody but me. I can't do it. Ampeg's 810 Classic Cabs. I'm sorry. I, I just, they're everywhere, and everybody swears by them. And like I said, I've heard P 
people get amazing sounds out of them. I don't know if somebody's been playing like a, a multi-decade prank on me where they keep giving me this same horrible cabinet that I can't get a good sound out of, but I just can't do it. I'm sorry. I, just, I can't. Next question. This question cracked me up and I loved it at the same time. Uh, I actually prefer espresso over coffee, and yes, I drink giant mugs of coffee. I have an issue. I, I drink more espresso, and I call it coffee, than any human being should, and th there's, there's problems. One of my big favorites, though, is uh, if you're going coffee, I actually like a company called Raven's Brew. Awesome stuff. Uh, if you're going outside of that, uh, what I really actually like are chicory coffee blends. The kind of very New Orleans Cafe du Monde style thing. Love that stuff. There's a company that makes it dirt cheap on Amazon called CDM. You want some really smoky, rich, flavorful stuff that's dark and it's just so thick you could almost stand a spoon up in it. CDM chicory blended coffee. I think it's like five bucks a block on Amazon. Absolute steal and you will be awake for years. Not that I would know. Favorite form of music? Not metal. Uh, it's going to be a time between two forms. Uh, this one's probably going to be funny, but I really like especially the darker versions of 80s new wave stuff. Absolutely love it. Bands like The Fix, especially, uh, Thomas Dolby, the very dark synth type of things. I love that kind of thing. Tied with that is very ambient instrumental stuff. Now, being on the bass note, here's something you need to look into if you have all an appreciation for atmospheric music. Buy everything from Patrick O'Hearn. Uh, trust me on this one. Patrick O'Hearn was the bass player for Frank Zappa for a number of years. He's a phenomenally skilled bass player. But, funny enough, he went from there to an 80s band called Missing Persons, which was as pop as it gets. And he moved to keyboards. And now he does these beautiful synth arrangements and plays fretless almost constantly. Gorgeous stuff. Really, really, I mean, it's an acid trip with no artificial means in it. Uh, try out the album Indigo. Try out Glaciation. And he often works with a guitar player named David Torn, who is a master of effect work. Check him out. And that type of stuff, along with artists like Vangelis, the guy that did Blade Runner, things like that, uh, their style of music is probably tied with the kind of 80s synth new wave thing as being my favorites after metal. I spend almost all my time listening to one of those three and then mixed in with some big band jazz here and there and some classical. So that's a little insight into Rodney's musical brain. Favorite places to play and tour? Uh, one, any place that's not Los Angeles. <laughs> really, just I'd love to play anywhere outside of Los Angeles. Uh, I actually like playing uh, the center of America. I find that a lot of those places, because they're not so saturated and they're not so jaded, people still come out and really enjoy music. They're there to have fun and enjoy themselves. It's not some industry capital or a bunch of, you know, stick up their butt people. They're there, and they are down for a good show and having a good time, and they're just fantastic. I love that type of stuff. One of the best shows I ever played was in a place called Pocatello, Idaho. No joke. Absolutely just sweat dripping down the walls level. And loved every minute of it. I have a total fondness for that place because I have never forgotten that show. Uh, outside of the U.S., I would have to say Japan. Uh, I really like how shows are handled. They're incredibly professional there. And uh, the artists are generally treated with respect. The fans are respectful to them while still having a great time. And 
that was that was a very cool thing to see. I, I was very fortunate and got to tour there twice, and I loved it. I hope I get to go back and do it again someday. But so the center of America and Japan, my favorite places to play. So that's going to cover it. That's it for this Metal Base Monday. Get your business in gear. Take care of yourself. Get all this stuff up and running ahead of time. Like, share, and subscribe, please. It genuinely helps out the channel. And uh, I'm going to be putting up the membership thing here soon and some great things like that. So if you've hung on to this point, and this is how I'll know, I'm going to do some rewards for the different levels of membership and things and some Patreon stuff. What rewards would you like? What kind of things would be cool that you'd like as a kickback for, you know, me saying thank you for the sponsorships and membership levels? I'm already thinking of private live feeds on the Discord server, small groups you can talk about technique or ask direct questions, uh, mix and music critiques, uh, help in composing bass lines, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. But you let me know. Let me know in the comments down below. And have you had any massive music missteps that you'd love to warn me or other people about? Let's share them. See you down below. Be well. I'll see you next time.